video for you today because we are comparing the four-wheel drive system in the Toyota 4Runner to the Lexus GX460 to find out which one works better for your needs. This is a Toyota 4Runner. It's an SR5 and the 4Runner has been largely unchanged for the better part of a decade now, but it's a very popular vehicle in the four-wheel drive segment and let's see how it compares to the Lexus GX. This is a good comparison because this is kind of entry-level 4Runner versus entry-level GX460. Now this first test, we're going to run a rear wheel slip test in this 4Runner because most 4Runners have a part-time four-wheel drive system. Now certain trims do have the full-time, but most are going to be like this vehicle. You've got a two high, a four high, and a four low. Driving around every day like you would going to school in the dry, you're going to leave the 4Runner in two-wheel drive high, which means it sends all the power to the rear wheels, which means that only the rear wheels are going to spin makes sense. Now to get unstuck or if you're about to drive through for example some snow you want to go ahead and flick the 4Runner into four-wheel drive high and what that's going to do is engage the front axle and there you can see pulled us right down but it's important to know that once you're out of the wet or the off-road section you're going through you want to put the Corner back in a two-wheel drive high so that it disengages that front axle so you don't get any weird crapping. Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. Now let's talk about this Lexus GX because this uses a very old school, very expensive way to design a four wheel drive. This is a full time four wheel drive vehicle with a true center differential. And let me explain what that means. Um, a lot of four wheel drive systems, especially in trucks are gonna be selectable. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, four high, four low. Um, the Lexus always in four wheel drive. Just like an open differential in the front of a car or a back axle of a car, if one wheel starts spinning, um, that wheel is just going to keep spinning. Well, the same thing happens with the center diff in this Lexus. So if the front drive shaft just starts spinning because the front wheels are stuck, the rear drive shaft is going to be stationary. Now to overcome this, you have a couple of different options. You can use traction control to slow down the front wheels and speed up the rear wheels. Lexus does use that system or you have a differential lock, which is another tactic that Lexus employs. So this is the front wheel slip test. Both front wheels completely stuck in the roller. Um, the rear wheels on the ground. I've got my center diff open or unlocked and let's see what happens. So I'm just in normal drive, four wheel drive high, adding some accelerator and you immediately heard the traction control engage, but the front wheels actually span just a little bit before we got unstuck, which is not what you'd expect in a typical truck with four high engage, because with four high engage in a typical truck, the front and the rear drive shafts are locked together. Here, I'll see if I can demonstrate it one more time. Uh, maybe I can actually disable traction control to help me demonstrate it a little bit better. But there's actually a little bit of spinning in the front, you see? It's actually a lot of spinning in the front and we're stuck until for some uh, traction control to engage to get us unstuck. Now to, to fix this issue altogether, you push a button. So down here by my knee, we have a little, little kind of diagram with an X between four wheels. That's gonna lock up the center differential and watch what happens now. So I'm gonna wait for the light to stop flashing. It's engaged. Now the front and the rear drive shafts locked at the same speed. When I let off the brake onto the accelerator, there's no slippage because both front and the rear uh, drive shafts are spinning at the same time. In the 4Runner, when you engage four-wheel drive high, the front and the rear drive shafts spin at the same speed. So it's kind of like locking that Lexus GX into four-wheel drive with the center diff lock button pushed. Um, so when we go to the diagonal slip test, I'm in four high, I'm in neutral, nice and settled, into drive, letting off the brake, out of the accelerator, you can actually hear the uh, traction control system work pulled us down with no difficulty. Really impressive result. You know, everyone thinks you gotta go buy the off-road or the pro to have an off-road capable 4Runner, but I mean, the Toyota traction control programming is so quick and disciplined that even a standard 4Runner will go places you just wouldn't believe. All right, next up, the diagonal slip test. And this is a very common situation in snow, in uh, off-road terrain, in all sorts of different environments, uh, especially in ice. Imagine you're driving up like an icy curve and you've got uh, 
one set of wheels up on the curb, the other on the ground. This is where the diagonal slip test comes into play. So first test, normal mode, sensor diff lock off, and let's see what happens. On the accelerator, now I always like to run these vehicles in their normal modes first to see how the traction control in the normal system works. And as you can see, you heard that kind of like sound that, that, that sounds like sneakers in a dryer, this kind of banging sound. That's actually the traction control system doing its job. It's engaging brakes, sending wheel speed to the wheels on the ground and we got unstuck. We'll try that same test one more time with the sensor diff lock on. See if that makes a noticeable difference. Off the brake, on at the accelerator. Yep, very noticeable difference. So the traction control had to work far less that time. So this just goes to show if you are driving in the snow in a Lexus GX and you happen to watch this video and you really want to improve your snow driving capability, go ahead and push that center diff lock button. It's going to make a pretty, pretty sizable difference. All right, on to the three wheel slip test. So both rear wheels are stuck. The front left is stuck. Only the front right is on the ground. Starting this test in four wheel drive high in the neutral. Make sure the vehicle's nice and settled into drive. No real special buttons to push except for the A track button, which we'll talk about here in a second. But for that, you've got to be in low range. But in high range, out of the accelerator. Thinking about it. All right, well, with enough spinning, and enough traction control intervention, we got unstuck, but let me reset the rollers and let's try that test one more time with our special button. All right, eight track time, baby. So when you go ahead and engage four low in this four runner, there we go, it's gonna click. It disengages all the safety systems. However, if you look above your head, even on this entry level SR5, there's a little button here labeled A-Track. And when I push that button, it engages a special off-road traction control system, which is extra aggressive at distributing wheel speed left and right. So, when I get on the throttle, you hear the braking, you actually hear the wheel on the ground spinning. <laughs> so that is how um, powerful this system is. It'll actually lock up the brakes so hard on one wheel that it will spin the wheel on the ground and essentially do a little little baby burnout. It's actually traction limited um, in this test. That's how aggressive it is. We'll try that same test with one rear wheel on the ground, but pretty cool, right? All right, next up the three wheel slip test. So both rear wheels stuck in the rollers, the front and left stuck, only the front right is on the ground with traction. Let's see what happens. Normal mode, diff lock off, four wheel drive high onto the accelerator. You know, I have to say, it's really working at it. We're not actually getting unstuck though, so let me go ahead, turn on the center differential lock, see if that makes a difference in four wheel drive high. There we go, it's engaged. Oh, very big difference. So, um, with the combination of the traction control and the sensor diff lock we were able to get unstuck. I want to try the test one more time though, but this time let's go ahead and engage four low. See how the vehicle performs in four low as you would use it in an off-road situation. Four low is engaged. Come on. Come on, traction control. Figure out what you want to do. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Took some time, um, but uh, it still came through on us and got us unstuck. Last test. Rear wheel slip test, we are in four low. We got a track engaged. We're gonna see how this 400 performs. Now in an off-road TRD version or a TRD Pro, at this point I'd probably lock up my locker. We don't have it in this 400, but I think you're gonna find that's probably okay. Okay, really good result. So we have a lot of articulation in that rear end, got a lot of traction with the ground, pulled us right down. Starting in four high, diff lock off, center diff lock off. I wish the vehicle had a rear or front diff lock, but you know, what are you gonna do? Into drive. Okay, we're, we're pretty stuck. Let me lock up that center diff. Give the track control some help here. Hey, there we go. So you can see that center diff lock makes a huge difference as we proved the traction control, very aggressive. Um, 
also works pretty well in the Lexus, I have to say. It, it's, a, it's a good system, even though we don't have multi-terrain selector crawl control in this vehicle, as a lot of the off-road Toyota Lexus products do. It's a capable rig. It does pretty darn well, but let's see how it performed out in the real world. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Onyx Off-Road. Andre's pit course, Onyx Off-Road, of course, is our go-to off-road navigation software. And in today's video, we've got the Forerunner uh, running through the course, starting out in four-wheel drive high. Now, this part-time system does offer some advantages over the full-time in the Lexus. From an engineering standpoint, part-time systems tend to be quite a bit lighter, also quite a bit less complex, also rely quite a bit less on traction control to distribute front and rear torque because that distribution is through a mechanical setup of just switching this little knob. The downsides are you have to switch the knob. And if you forget to switch the knob, as my mom did when I was a kid, remember this distinctly, actually I don't because I was two, but my dad told me about it. Um, third gen foreigner, she had it new, uh, driving over Winter Pass in Colorado, forgot to put it in four high, almost spun out and flew off the mountain. And then she sold the foreigner because you know, she was her fault, but she didn't remember to engage four wheel drive. And that's not as uncommon as you might think. Now let's see how the system performs on the uh, trenches course, these large offset divots, cut into the earth, get the vehicle on a couple wheels here. We're gonna start out in four wheel drive high, which is how you drive it, you know, in snow, light off road, that kind of thing. Now this first test here, very articulated, starting to pick up wheels. That sneakers in the dryer sound is actually the traction control working its magic. It's slowing down the spinning wheels, sending wheel speed to the, the tires on the ground. And even in four wheel drive high, I mean, the capability on this Forerunner is such that there's enough articulation and there's enough finesse in the traction control where I am not struggling hardly at all. We're just walking right through this. It's getting really steep at the top here. Taking it really slow on purpose, not to test my cojones, but to test the system. I mean, and you can see, even in four wheel drive high, the capability on this vehicle is impressive. Yeah, that's the nice thing about the, even the base foreigner like this, right? You're gonna be paying mid thirties, low forties for a foreigner like this out the door. Um, and you can take it off-road immediately. The Lexus GX has the capability. It's got the body on frame. It's got the V8. It's got the four-wheel drive system, but it's got too much plastic. It's got not enough approach angle in the front out of the box. Whereas this Forerunner, take it right from the dealer, straight to Moab. You can have a ton of fun without damaging anything, any um, fancy body work. So that's a big pro. Um, okay, let's go try uh, this test one more time. This time in four-wheel drive low. So, uh, of course, to engage that in this vehicle, we're gonna have to come to a stop, put it into neutral, um, select four-wheel drive low, and maybe I'll try it first with a track disengaged, and when we get stuck, we'll push that button and see what a difference it makes. So this is four low, no a track. And of course, we've got open diffs on this vehicle, no mechanical locker, nothing like that. Take in the same course, super slow, and you can see we're stuck. We're not going anywhere. Push one button, light comes on on the dash, watch the difference. With less throttle, with less speed, we're just crawling through it. Articulated once again, we were able to maintain traction to the point there, it didn't need to activate the system. There it goes again. It's so good, I mean, it's not quite what a locker can do, but it's not far off what a locker can do if we're being completely transparent. You know, everyone thinks you gotta spend big bucks for the TRD Off-Road, big bucks for the TRD Pro. No, an SR5 in low range with A-Track Engage will do 99% of anything any off-roader would wanna do. That's how good this system is. Time to see how this GX460 performs. Now I have the Monroney on this car right here, and as equipped, with the Black Line Special Edition largely in appearance package that gives you um, some wheel stuff, some trim stuff, and the, the panoramic view monitor. Uh, as equipped, 62,460 bucks. Starts in the high 50s. You know, when this car debuted a number of years ago, quite a few years ago, that was a lot of money, but going into 2023, 62K for a V8 luxury SUV with a proper four-wheel drive system, I mean, a typical Wrangler can now get well into the 60s. Same thing with the Bronco. And then if you want a special edition, like that AEV Wrangler that they just came out with over a hundred grand. So I kind of feel like 62K for this level of quality and refinement is pretty good. And you get that 301 horsepower, 4.6 liter V8, which will just go till the end of time. But let's try it through an off-road test. So obviously this is a vehicle geared more toward luxury. 
And that's a little bit of a shame because body on frame construction, proper suspension on this vehicle. We only have the steel springs in this car, but you know, still proper suspension. Um, and then they, they kind of hamstring it with these crazy bumpers and side steps and to make it look better and more fancy. And that to me is a little bit of a shame because um, I wish they just did a stripped down model that didn't have so much plastic on it. So you could do stuff like this trenches course more easily. Now this is trenches. It's our go-to test for four wheel drive systems out in the real world. These divots cut to the earth at varying angles, starting in four high center diff unlocked. And we're gonna see how it performs. Taking it really slow on purpose, trying to get the vehicle off kilter. Man, the Lexus traction control programming, you can tell that they took the lessons learned from the TRD Pro 4Runners and Tacomas and apply it to these vehicles because they perform so similarly in the way that the traction control system engage. They're aggressive, but they're also very deliberate. There's not a lot of spinning that goes on. There's not a lot of kind of faff or fuss. Even with the center diff unlocked in high range, we're just walking through this. It's really cool what this will do. Now we do have downhill assist or DAC, right? Which we could use going down steep hills, but um, we don't have like the off-road settings in this vehicle and it still performs so well. Really is an amazing performing vehicle for uh, for what it is. And when you consider, you know, the Lexus or the BMW that you might cross shop with this, those vehicles aren't designed in this matter. Now, of course, the downside of this is old school V8, six speed automatic, low range, lots of weight, lots of weight and you know, the fuel economy, 16 combined. <laughs> so not a huge amount of impressive uh, numbers there, but if you don't care about that thing, you know, this thing will last you. I have no, no, I had no difficulties putting several hundred thousand miles on this vehicle, I think, and it's gonna last a so long as well. So let's try the low range. Um, we'll lock up the center diff. We'll go into the most aggressive mode. Center diff locked, low range engaged, and watch this. Still a lot of nice functionality in this vehicle. Good screen. They have changed interior a little bit. They have updated it. Looks good. Um, very beautiful leather quality. I'm not sure I like this gray on this black. The gray seats don't feel very premium, but everything else, so good. I do like this panoramic camera. Works really, really well. You can actually see through the hood. Get a shot of that. Look at this. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Now you can see what's on the edges of the car. That's really, really nice. But once again, just taking it really slow, less drama with the center diff locked. As we've proven time and time again, that's the way to go if you're in really tricky terrain. And it's just walking right up it. You know, Toyota and Lexus have, have done wonders with their crawl control system, and it's an impressive system, but honestly, this is doing pretty much the same thing just with my foot. Amazing. Really, really, really good vehicle. Man, I, I, I really hope that they keep building this, even in this current form, for a couple of years. Because the GX, one of the number one go-to overlanders, for good reason, because it's just that good. So I hope you learned a little bit in this video. We went really in-depth on these two different four-wheel drive systems, showed the pros and the cons of each, showed how they perform, not only in a controlled environment, but also off-road. And now, hopefully, you feel better about buying a vehicle, be it the Toyota or the Lexus, for your snow-going, winter-going, as well as off-road needs. Guys, let me know what you think. As always, it's been Tommy Case and Cole behind the camera on this one. We'll see you in the next video.